Good Motivational Monday, ladies and gentlemen. I am Chase Corrington, and this is the Chase Corrington YouTube channel, where we seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment, where we seek to discover the hidden mysteries of our reality and the hidden wisdom of the ages. In this video today, I'm going to express my thoughts on words do not make a man understand, but it takes the man to understand the words man or woman, respectively. The self and the other are one and the same. And so it's very fascinating, ladies and gentlemen, that in this whole business of talking about enlightenment and talking about spirituality and psychology and attempting to bring happiness to life, the great saying, the great secret is that there is no way to happiness. Rather, happiness is the way. And that's so confusing because we strive to be happy rather than just arriving at happiness where we are. It's very hard to do. And so, when you come up with these principles, philosophies, uh, practices, concepts that explain these nuances of our mind and of our perception of our environment in the way we react rather than respond, um, it's... When you try to explain and help people to understand this higher level of thinking to create more happiness in our lives, it comes down to the fact that the words do not make a man understand or woman, but rather it takes the man or woman to understand the words. And so you could tell somebody the ultimate secrets of the universe. You could give somebody the great hidden wisdom of the ages, ladies and gentlemen. And you can lead a horse to water, you know, the old saying, but it's up to the horse to drink. And so... You can give people the spiritual principles and the philosophical principles and ideas and viewpoints and perspectives and the psychology that goes into um, gaining control of your own happiness and not allowing um, others outside of you to control what gives you your happiness. The great thing that I've learned from Wayne Dyer, I reference Wayne Dyer a lot, that's because I listen to Wayne Dyer a lot, at least over the last nine to ten months. The great thought, though, is the, the idea... that we are not a result. How do I explain this? It's like, we'll come back to that. It, it takes, in order for us to explain this understanding, even to ourselves, we can hear somebody give us the secrets of the universe, the ultimate way to happiness. But if we're not ready, if we're not open and willing to understand it, then we won't. It's, it's kind of like when you read a book and you can't get through one page of it. It's just, well, maybe one page is a bad example, but you know, you go through the first chapter, you're going to give it a try, and it just, 
it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't sink in. It doesn't resonate. It's boring. It's not interesting. All of these things. So you put the book away and then a year later or sometime later, you can come back to that very same book, you know, show, lecture, philosophy, you know, principle. You can come back to these things that you previously had no connection to and got nothing out of. And then from a new perspective, from a new understanding, from a new place in your journey, you then resonate entirely. You, you begin to understand, you know, back to the book. It's like, oh, now you're flipping through the pages and it makes so much sense. Instantly it clicks in to where before you could read over the same thing and it just didn't mean anything at all. And so words do not make a man or woman understand. It takes the man or woman to understand the words. I think that's so fascinating. And so the self, because in self-help and spirituality and finding happiness and positive psychology, there is this concept of the self that continually shows up. The self and the I. Like when people say that I feel a certain way, it's like, who is the I? Like when you say, I feel bad for myself. There's two people there. The self and the other part of yourself. Like it's your higher self and your lower self. The dreamer and that which is within the dream. The, the dreamer and that which exists within the dream. And it is a relationship, an interdependent coexistence relationship. So, evil, good and evil, black and white, light and dark. We like to choose sides. We like to say that we are the good people. And then the most interesting thing there is for good or bad people is talking about the other people. So for good people, say we're good people, or, you know, either way, we really enjoy talking about how bad and how wrong and how weird and how off the path and off track and uninformed and unenlightened. We really like to talk and focus on these others, the black to our white, or the opposite to our perspective. And what we so often forget is that we are dependent on the others, the other side of the spectrum that we so that we so much persist to resist, what you resist shall persist. So say we talk down about people who aren't in our path and people who do things differently than we do. And we want to do everything we can to correct them and fix their wrongs and teach them the way. When our position is entirely dependent on theirs existing also at the same time. So these, like use it in a religious context. You talk, you know, you talk about, say you are a person of God in a, you know, in a Christian, I was raised Christian, no longer am. 
although I still recognize the existence of divinity within each of us. But that's kind of different. The, the whole Christian thing, like, oh, these other people are sinful, and they're bad, and they, they're making the wrong choices, and we need to teach them the way so they're no longer sinful because we're good and we know the way, when the fact of the matter is the people that's saying they're good are 100% dependent on the opposite to show them where they are. You could argue that since we've had enough time to gain a perspective, that if everyone became what someone would call good, and see, that's just the thing. Good and bad is a matter of opinion. One's man, one man's treasure, and I keep saying man, this isn't a sexist thing. Uh, to me, man is human, woman or man. So one human's treasure is another human's trash. One being's trash is another being's treasure. And so good and bad is really just a matter of perception or perspective. And this goes back to the words do not make a man or woman understand, but it takes the person and their perception and perspective of the words and their world and their reality. It takes the man or woman to understand the words. And the ideas, the concepts, the philosophies, the principles. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thinking in my mind right now while I'm saying this, what am I going to title this video? <laughs> Is it going to be... Um, how to understand? Enlightenment? The self and the other? The battle of duality. That's the tough thing about doing YouTube videos is when it comes to the metadata. I'm like, man, I can sit here and talk about stuff. But then I'm like, I got to figure out how to categorize this. And that's the interesting thing I, I think about the universe. Which could be God or everything. Um, whatever you want to call it, this existence, is that the second you start try to analyze and categorize and compartmentalize and specialize and, you know, make things specific, distinct, and separate is the, the very beginning of all our problems. And so I'm like trying to take these very organic thoughts and compartmentalize them into categories. And that limits them. That goes back to the self, us, and the other. The black and the white. It goes back to the separation and not the one when the truth of the matter is the one is dependent upon the separation to exist. I don't feel like that was a proper way of saying it. The, when, we, when we begin to categorize things, we begin to separate them from everything else. We are not organisms in an environment, rather an enviro-organism. Alan Watts, Wayne Dyer, and many people have spoke about these ideas that... We are not separate from our environment, but rather it is an interdependent relationship and both sides need each other equally to exist. I think when I say to exist, my mind's like, well, if there was just, you know, if one side didn't exist then the other one goes poof, and that's the wrong way to think about this. It's like, you cannot describe a person without describing their environment. 
I'm playing devil's advocate in my head. I'm like, well, can you? Well, let's try it. Like, okay, here's this guy. He's tall. He's got brown hair. And there isn't no guy. I'm just kind of making this up. Uh, tall, brown hair. You know, um, fit in shape. So we are describing just the person there. But then you would say, what is this person doing? You would then say, well, they're standing. And see, stand, whatever they're doing is dependent upon the environment for it to be a thing. So you can't separate the image from the background. Even though they're separate things, they're interdependent upon each other to work out. So when you're looking at me in the video here, in order for me to do this, even though it may look like I am separate from the background and everything that's going on around me, the reality is me being separate from the background is 100% dependent on the fact that that me and the background go with each other. Alan Watts, he goes, I, I invented this word goes with. It's like one goes with the other. So in order to have darkness or light, you know, I can cast a shadow there must be a relationship between the two. I, pres I heard an idea a, f a week or two ago, maybe a week ago, and I presented it to a, a friend of mine and a co-worker, and the reactions were appalled, offended, because it's a very offensive thought, but it's so profound to me. I think I first heard it on the... Um, intrepid radio program with Scotty Roberts intelligent talk check that out if you've never checked out Scotty Roberts in the intrepid radio program but it's like the the interdependency Where was I going? I do that all the time. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> it goes with. The, the light and the dark, the background and the image. What do you do? is what the universe does. What the universe does is also what you do. That's fascinating. It's mind-blowing. I'm like, there's so many things to think about. But the idea that we are separate, I think, causes us a lot of unhappiness. Rather than seeing ourselves as a relationship. And when you begin to see this relationship, this interdependency, this coexistence, you begin to judge people less. And you say, oh, they are just as dependent Maybe dependent is a bad word because we don't want to be dependent on our environment. We want to be inner directed people. 
so that way our relationship with the environment comes from within to the outside rather from from the outside to within so when we say when we separate ourselves from the rest of everything else and we say oh it's that person that made me do this and you know it was my parents fault because I didn't do that a lot of people seem to want to blame their childhood and the way they were raised rather than you know their their choices and the way they act and react to certain situations oh yeah okay back to what i was saying from the scotty roberts show the thing that's offensive that i brought up and this goes to our having the 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 correlation between light and dark and how we need dark to see the light and we need the light to see the dark. And so this may offend some people, but I would propose that the Holocaust and the things that happened to the Jewish people, the atrocities, were necessary that's going to make some people mad. Like, open your mind here for just a second. Was necessary in order for us to gain the perspective of respect and reverence and empathy and compassion towards the Jewish people that gave them the opportunity to create the Jewish state. Agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments, but this to me is an example and see it makes me laugh because the you know Hitler and whoever was trying to exterminate these Jewish people in their efforts to do that achieved the opposite result in their efforts to exterminate and get rid of somebody they achieved the world's respect and honor towards those people because of what they went through. <laughs> so I'm like, if you go out and try to eliminate and get rid of somebody, they're only going to be more respected, more honored, and more, you know, prevalent than ever. It made me laugh earlier. Alan Watts was talking about Jesus and early Christianity and how they, they adopted. There was two ways they could go about it because this guy comes in and says he's the son of God. He's like, hey, I'm I'm the one. Everybody check this out. And so, you know, you can either deny it or you can accept him and put him on a pedestal and make him the most important guy so that everything he says is not paid attention to, but rather his popularity is the thing that people focus on. <laughs> That's a deep joke, but it's very funny. Um, sorry about my crazy versions of comedy, ladies and gentlemen. See, it's a matter of perspective. It takes the man or woman to understand the words not the words to make a man or woman understand. The self and the other goes with each other. We are not separate from our environment, but we are a part of it all. We are part of the happening. You cannot observe something without affecting it. What you do is what the universe does. And what the universe does is also what you do. The thing we learn from history is that we never seem to learn from history, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to keep going. We're going to keep trying 
And we're going to stop striving and start arriving in the place where we want to be. We're going to stop trying to find the way to happiness and start making happiness the way. That's kind of contradictory to what I enjoy saying so much every episode is seek to achieve and maintain happiness through enlightenment. Seek to discover the hidden mysteries of our reality and the hidden wisdom of the ages. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the words will not make you understand. It takes you to understand the words. I appreciate everybody who watches these videos. If you get value from the content that I provide, then consider subscribing. Smash the like button and let me know in the comments what you think of these thoughts and ideas. And share this with somebody who you think may need to hear these thoughts and ideas if you think it can help them just 1% in their journey. The subscribes and likes and comments tell the YouTube algorithm to place this video in front of more people because the algorithm just wants people to stay on the platform longer. So if we're getting people to spend time on the platform learning and growing and getting to a higher place of peace and love and happiness and you know, understanding, compassion, all of these things, then that's, I think, better than people spending uh, 10,000 hours watching cat videos. Nothing against cats. I love cats. <laughs> all right. Love you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in the future with more interesting topics to throw your way.